do a, a small method. Smugglers to servers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the making ways, we have to find yeah, something very good, very good. With, uh, <laughs> very with, good. with the theme, which is going to uh, set up for, for, for Alistair. Uh, Nick Dubois has managed to set the scene, really. I think I'm, not, I'm very, very UK focused for our international guests, but I think the themes and the issues are what the uh, conference is about, which is about policy, it is about practice, it is about different views and opinions on how things work, setting the challenge for our uh, industry colleagues who are with us in terms of the one voice. For education, we claim we have the Association for Management is the voice for events education. Um, and hopefully there will be a lot more communication <coughs> dialogue. And at the end of the three days that we do go away with an agenda for action, that's the idea. Some of that might be soft, it might be the networks, the um, collaboration that you might go away with in terms of research or future student projects or working with industry. But we do hope at the end of the three days you will do that and to try and encourage you to communicate. We didn't have many followers on Twitter. Um, <laughs> at So we did, would like, there were only 48 this morning, I hope that's gone up. So one way of Continuing the communication is, yeah. Yeah, it's hashtag BU ICE. And is at, oh, I should know this. I, no. What's the um, account that looking it up? <coughs> if you look in the program, we do ask you to, uh, to have a look through, and it does ask you to, to follow us and take pictures, so welcome to that. A reminder that breaks are on the seventh floor and we're on uh, the third floor for most of the sessions. And after Alistair has uh, given his talk, we will um, have a break. Can I just welcome, sorry Alistair. Um, Alistair Turner is, that's his role, making ways for us as, as, as events industry. And uh, a, a good, what we think is a really good case study is Britain for Events, which is trying to bring the disparate um, sectors together to, to be that one voice through uh, a marketing campaign. So as Nick Dubois said, the, the creative and PR marketing sectors are also very much part of, of the events. So uh, interested to, to hear uh, the history and the development, Alistair. So thank you very much for your time today. You all right with your? Yeah, I hope so. Well, no. Um, press the button. Press the button. Hello. 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 Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Because <laughs> otherwise we're going to have some quiet time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, my name's Alistair Turner. I'm PR director of a business called Davis Tanner, which is a PR company, and also PR director of um, a campaign <coughs> called Bread for Events. Um, and I have a <coughs> voice. So um, instead of giving a speech, I'll give a squeak and do um, accept my apologise for any coughing um, and things like that. Um, I'm not also not an event organiser either, I'm a PR uh, person. so. Um, further reducing my credibility in front of the other man. Um, but Nick said, as a PR person, my job is to make other people look good. So let me see if I can just demonstrate that for a second over the next half an hour. Um, but actually, given a bad voice and no event experience, um, organizing events experience, why have I come down to Bournemouth to talk to you guys? Uh, what's my agenda? Um, essentially, my agenda is to help the UK events industry become more internationally competitive. That's what we do. As a PR company, um, we work solely within uh, the tourism industry. A large part of our business is the events industry. Um, and as a business that directly benefits from that industry, we see it as our business to make that industry um, uh, more successful. Our work with the Britain for Events campaign puts us in a position to do that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, campaign um, in a second. Um, also, this is a speech that I've um, given at a number of universities as well. Um, the agenda here as well is just to remind people as they enter uh, the events industry that they are part of an industry. 
uh, as Nick said, there's many people that come out of university and what they want to do is immediately walk straight out there and start organising Glastonbury or hopefully the next Olympic Games. It's important to remind them that there are bigger things happening within their industry. Remind them of some of the trends that are affecting their industry. What are they about to walk into as well? So I thought I wouldn't tweak it too much uh, for the academic community for that very reason. Now this is a bit of a sad day for me actually. Um, this is video I'm about to show, um, as of Tuesday at about 11.30, the Economic Impact Survey is going to be launched at the Meteor Show UK, um, and it's going to make this um, video immediately old, um, and the next two slides on it as well. This I consider to be a fantastic thing, though. Um, it's sad to say goodbye to my video, and we will update it, um, but actually it's really great that we are in a position where we are now being able to present our own industry and the wider industry and business community with new information and data. So um, a tear in my eye, I will click it on. If it doesn't work, this is going to be really unfair on me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I think that the message is loud and clear. Basically, if you want to make more money, go into conference and events rather than music festivals. Um, no, no. I mean, Nick, Nick played out. I mean, we're a 36 plus billion pound industry in the UK. Um, we're setting our sights on becoming um, 48 uh, plus billion pound um, uh, industry 
in the UK by 2020. Um, the new research from um, the Economic Impact Survey and GLAD will add more credibility to those figures um, and hopefully show uh, some growth in some of those areas as well. So we are by no means a small um, industry doing small things. Um, and I think it's important for us to remember uh, the clout that we have. Um, but we talk a lot about numbers, and sometimes I think as an industry, when we're trying to promote ourselves, we talk a little bit too much, uh, too, too, too much about the wrong numbers rather than the right numbers. Um, these breakdowns um, obviously show uh, a, a number of different things. I guess what's of equal uh, of interest is the sheer value of what we do as well. We, um, we, our business people, when they travel on business, spend more money than tourism people. They impact on local uh, communities. There's the impact on cities the impact on uh, everywhere they go, uh, their big uh, business. It supports lots and lots of small businesses, it supports lots and lots of creative businesses. And again, when Nick talks about um, uh, looking at the different sectors of industry with which we touch, we touch a huge amount of them. Um, we also um, are a huge amount, of, uh, we're responsible for a huge amount of expenditure. Not all of that out of our government's pockets, but actually either public-private funded or directly public funded, which again boosts local economies as well. So we've got a lot to be proud of, and it's a great story to be able to tell um, as well. But actually, one of the things that we're trying to do is move our argument on a little bit, and not just talk about the numbers, but to talk about the actual impact, what a major event or an event does um, to the society and to business and to everything around it. Um, uh, the, uh, my colleague in the PPEP, Michael Hurst, who's uh, chair of the Business Visits and Events Partnership and also chair of Tourism Alliance, he often recounts the story of Adelaide, who um, held a, a, an ophthalmic um, conference. Um, and what they did is they took the economic benefit of that conference and they invested it in a local ophthalmic, this is such a horrible, ophthalmic um, hospital. What they were then able to do was start to reposition the city so they would attract more people of that specialism into the city, so that it not only would it renew the conference coming back, but they would also bring more jobs and more specialism into that city. Now, the economic benefit of that, uh, of that um, conference, you know, let's say that's you know, 5,000 um, specialists spending 131 pound a day, that's one number, but the actual ongoing impact that that had on that local society, from medical care to whatever else was gonna happen in the long term, is far, far greater than that. And actually, maybe we just undersell what these major events can do for our city. Also, Nick very, very um, eloquently put together this idea of what it does is it facilitates business. Every time we hold a major event to do with a certain industry, a certain business, what we do is we self-promote our country as an expert in that business as well. It's a really, really important thing. We also fuel knowledge, research, and development, and we know that the major things such as Web 2.0, when everyone remember what that was, that was actually launched at a conference. It was a conference that brought that message to everyone. So what we see is these major, major impacts on our, um, on our society and on the way we do business coming out of our events. And again, you can't but measure that through the amount of people that come through the room. And of course, they encourage face-to-face -face communication. And one of the things that this campaign is trying to do more than everything is place where events sit in the marketing mix as more and more um, of our marketing channels go onto, um, uh, onto digital. <clears throat> One of the things that we try and look at as well, and, and again, this is more for students as they enter into the industry, is the trends that they're going to be facing as they um, get new work and, and, and come into the industry. Um, I don't think it's, uh, it's wrong to say that it's been a struggling few years for our industry. It's not one that's, um, um, it's done well. We've had some major things going on, but as an industry, it's been tough out there. What we're seeing is grassroots coming back. We're seeing people starting to event, uh, invest a little bit in their events. But one of the things we're seeing, which I think is a really positive move, is that this idea that people are having less events, but they're having more of them, i.e. what they're doing is they're actually are putting more value on a specific event instead of littering lots of small events that don't actually achieve what they're supposed to do, which means actually I think that's a major endorsement of our industry. It may well hurt our industry as well, but again, if we're looking at international competitive of the UK events industry, less is more is a good, um, <coughs> is a good trend for us to be tracking. The other one, and I'm sure everyone's heard the phrase, is, that is hybrid. 
this major, major change in the way that events work alongside digital media is a major thing um, that everyone should be exploring. It's a massive opportunity for our events industry. And a lot of um, our clients and a lot of people we do business with talk about how events can ignite social media conversations and wider conversations. This can be no clearly um, no better illustrated than in the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games where more tweets were, ser uh, were sent during that opening ceremony than in the entire Beijing Olympic Games. I was also um, uh, privy to some of the infographics that came out <coughs> of that opening ceremony where people were literally tracking the mood of the nation according to the social media chatter that took place. And it started off with this nervous country that was really, really worried that we were going to make a right cock up here. And at the end, it finished with this major national pride, we're going to do it, it's going to work. That wasn't a social media campaign, that was an event that did that. And again, this, this um, meeting between hybrid, um, this meeting between events and social media um, is so important for the future of our industry. Aligned to that is the idea that content is king. And a lot of people are talking more about content. You don't go to an event because it's nice and warm, of course you do, but actually you're there for the content. And, that, and, and the content that was at those Olympic Games showed that if we get the content right, um, then, people, then it will move people and it will move industries and it will move business, and that's really, really powerful. So content is really important, and so is creativity. <coughs> Of course, we're not working in the events industry anymore. We don't do events, we do experiences now as well. So I think people are trying, a lot of the things that we're hearing from people is trying to move away from an event, but actually sit there and say, actually, we're not trying to do that. We're trying to create experiences for people. And I see that, I think that's a fair move as well, but it's something we've got to be aware of as we, as we go forward. I think one of the other trends that we're seeing, which I think is really, really exciting, is the, um, the dynamism and, that we're seeing in the festival industry as well. The festival industry in 2012, um, during the Olympic Games, during what was an essentially a very wet summer, and it doesn't look too much good for this uh, summer going forward, took a real battering. Now actually that's one of our most dynamic and most creative sectors of the events industry. And in essence, in my mind, it's no different from an, uh, from an exhibition. It's, uh, uh, it, it lives on its understanding of its audience. It lives on its community, it lives on its um, ability to talk to its community and provide content that engages with it. And this great opportunity for all those people who want to get into the event and festival market is to learn from the exhibition market because that's doing really well. And actually vice versa, because a lot of exhibitions are starting to look a little bit old and a little bit tired, and there's a need to really reinvent that. The ones that are doing it really, really well are really succeeding as well. And this marriage between different parts of the industry I think is something that we should all be trying to encourage as well. And that can happen at an academic level. <coughs> I won't talk um, too much about CSR because um, uh, I know Fiona Pelham will be talking about that in uh, some of the other se uh, sessions and uh, she's far more qualified and far more eloquent in that area that CSR is not going away. And actually, from our point of view, it's not so much as a promotional um, uh, opportunity, but it's a very much a threat to our industry. We've seen what happens when people uh, attack us with a CSR argument. In essence, this is an industry that encourages people to get in planes, trains, and automobiles and burn fuel just to come and get content. We need to create the argument for that, why that's good. We also need to create the backstop against it as well. And again, Fiona can talk about that. Um, she's got a lot of good things to say. And one of the, um, the things that we're seeing coming across from the US at the moment, <coughs> excuse me, is who's paying for my space. One of the things that we may have hamstrung ourselves on is this constant ability that we keep on having to bring down the, uh, uh, an entire event to how much money the delegate spent on his taxi, his coffee shop, and his hotel room. This is really, really dangerous because what we're doing is we've uh, basically bred a new breed of event organizers that turn around and say, well, I'm not paying for the space. I'm bringing all these people in. I'm not paying for that. And of course, there's been a huge, uh, uh, we've bred a huge breed of um, uh, venues and, uh, and uh, uh, cities that are willing to put their money in and buy that. Now, of course, that money's not gonna last forever. And increasingly, what we're seeing is that money is now being taken away, which leaves the question, who's going to pay for my space. This is a big issue um, that was at a conference, that was recently raised at a conference in America, and some of my clients came back and said, wow, if this crosses the water, we've got some worrying issues here as an industry. 
And I think this is a really, really big one that we need to keep an eye on. Who's paying for my service? <coughs> issues as well, um, mostly around taxation. A lot of uh, what Nick was talking about with the All Party Parliamentary Group inquiry is to unearth some of these issues. And these are fights that are already being fought by the tourism industry. But if we accept that part of our industry lives in that tourism industry, um, we have those issues as well. It's madness that um, some parts in Ireland have less VAT to bill on events than parts of England. It makes us immediately incompetitive to people just over the water from us. Not least um, all the other countries that reduce VAT on tourism spend as well. It makes us less internationally competitive. It means that no matter how creative and how wonderful and how brilliant our infrastructure is, we're still going to fall at a simple price comparison. Visas is a major issue. The events industry is an international industry. Yes, we do great events in the UK and all that sort of crap, but we are pitching internationally. We are competing internationally. And if we want to get um, international delegates into our shores, we need to make it easier for them to come. It's madness that the Paris Air Show is seen as an international air show. The Farnborough Air Show is seen as a UK air show. They're both called international. But if you walk through the doors of each of those events, you will see a very, very different demographic. And that goes down to visas. And then we've got FPD on flights, which means, again, we're already making ourselves uh, even more expensive uh, the moment people pop on the flight when they arrive. And again, one of the things that I think uh, you know, these sort of forums should start discussing really quick as well is, are we actually a tourism industry or are we a business industry? And again, in Nick's speech, he talked a lot about business. This is what we do. We are in the uh, we are in the, we are a business medium, but actually we keep on getting lumped into tourism. We keep on sitting under um, tourism bodies. And we're funded by tourism people. Now we don't want to lose that, but actually, is that the long-term nature of our industry? So it's a tough one to take on. I'm going to plug the campaign now. Essentially, Britain for Events is concerned with taking some of these arguments forward and, and creating an environment where UK event companies can flourish. And that's not just flourishing in the UK, it's also about those UK talent and the UK businesses going externally and, 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 and flourishing externally as well. Um, in all of our issues and things like that, I didn't mention talent. And I know there's going to be some sessions on talent and professionalism within the industry to come. But actually, for now, we're very proud that we've got a highly uh, skilled, a highly professionalized industry, not least out of the, uh, of the legacy from the Olympic Games, all those people that have basically had their experience in events and, um, and doubled overnight, basically. So we have a, a huge thing to, uh, a great story to tell. Um, our job is to get people to buy British as well. So we know that event organizers have a choice, and that's event organizers in the UK. They have a choice to stay here or go abroad, vice versa. Uh, on the inbound stuff as well, so we want to try and encourage that. We're managed by the Business, Business and Events Partnership who tell us what to say. Uh, they represent all the trade associations and they make sure that we're on message um, and we are <coughs> supported thankfully by the industry as well. Um, our job is to talk to business primarily. That's our job. We want to get businesses investing in events and when they invest in events, we want them to invest in UK events. Um, we do a lot of work with government as well. Um, we find that uh, there's routes through what we're doing with the party parliamentary group, there's routes through what we're doing um, uh, with UKTI and different organisations that government help us with as well. We also talk to our industry um, and uh, Nick, Nick again talked a lot about this idea of speaking with one voice. We try and be that one voice and to be that one voice we need to talk to our industry and work out what that is. That often fails but we try. Um, and then we talk to consumers because Again, one of the key legacies from our point of view as a campaign is not only was uh, the London Olympics not only the only event, uh, the only Olympics to sell all of its um, uh, Olympic tickets, it was also the only one to ever sell all of its Paralympic tickets. People in the UK like going to events, conferences as well as events and things like that. So actually we've got this great thing where actually if you bring your event to the UK, people will come. That's important to an event organiser as well. Um, we've got some good support out there as well, very 
worked very closely with Nick and uh, the River Events campaign was the secretariat for the all-party parliamentary inquiry. So we were able, uh, thanks to the investment we get from the industry, to go out there and um, support that inquiry from happening. That's really exciting. We'll see what happens from the results of that inquiry. But essentially, we've got the chance to deliver tangible benefit to the UK events industry because of any policy recommendations that that inquiry brings in. Um, we've also got great support from people like Lord Coe, who since, who at the beginning of organising the Olympics, didn't realise what the event industry was. He was just organising the Olympics. Now he does, and he's a real passionate supporter of everything that happened out there, and a very, very passionate supporter of our industry as well. He saw our industry get itself together to support what he did. And also we've got support from Hugh Robinson, who's the tourism minister, and also David Cameron, who's the prime minister at the moment. <coughs> research reports. Um, these are our, um, this is our armory. These are the things that, 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 that we go out there to try and convince people that events are a useful <coughs> way to invest in. So we have a huge amount of research reports. In this closure room, I have to be honest with, uh, with you, um, from a PR point of view, not many are very credible. We've got a real problem in this industry of being able to really credibly tell the world what we do, how much it's worth, what it does. And again, hopefully next week I won't have to say that ever again. But we have great uh, reports as well. We've also got recommendations, opportunities for growth, and I would advise people to look on the Britain for Events um, website to look at some of those reports because I think they're really, really good academically. Sorry, I'm doing right, sorry, I'm not